on ecology and psychotherapy. Well, thinking about uh, this topic, I would revise it. It would be not ecology and psychotherapy, but in integrative therapy, we would rather say ecology and integrative therapy. And um, years ago, 1967, we also spoke of humane therapy, mm. human therapy, yeah, the human medicine. I didn't use this for a long time, but, but uh, again and again we talked about human therapy, humane uh, therapy. And uh, nowadays, I rather would even say mundane therapy. Mundus Latin that means the world. Mm. And we belong to the world, we are a part of the world. And uh, if the world is sick, uh, we are growing sick. And uh, so being human means being a part of the world. That's trivial, trivial. It's so trivial that most of the people on this planet don't realize that they are a part of the world. What does it mean? One of our core philosophers, Maurice Merleau-Ponty, said, the human being is an être au monde. It means he is directed towards the world. Être au monde. So être means uh, he is participating in the chair du monde. We are from the flesh of the world, Cher du monde. If we look uh, with the eyes of an evolutionary biologist uh, on this fact, that's true. Because in every cell of everybody here, we have organella like the mitochondria. And the mitochondria once were um, little animals Protozoe, living somewhere in some, some pond, uh, being the food for uh, radiolaria, that means very small organisms. So they were eaten and digested. But uh, someday it happens that some of these uh, organella were not digested but went on living in this uh, cell. And later, we had uh, other groups of cell like Bocheria or Conjugate. These are uh, groups of cell slime uh, cells. And uh, there we have these organella, and we still have them in us, which have their own DNA. That means you are filled with archibacteria. I'm not talking about the biome. That means all these micro animals, one and a half kilo. Each of you has one and a half kilo of these little, they're not parasites, but they're living with us in the symbiosis, in our mouths, in our genitals, uh, in, in the gut, uh, in the cerumen of the ear, we have these, these animals, one and a half kilo. Imagine that and if you see them on the micro uh, under the microscope, then they are not looking they are looking like, like aliens. <laughs> so you are in, inhabited by aliens. But I'm not talking about those. Also they are of high importance for our psychological and somatic health. So without these animals in ourselves uh, we are really in danger. Uh, and we have a high risk to fall in. It's really important for the production of our own body chemistry. Yeah, we are permanently producing uh, chemistry. So if the light is uh, too bright, there's a chemical reaction in us. If we don't have enough light, like in Norway, 
uh, there are some chemical reactions missing, so we we have to substitute vitamin D. Maybe you, you can eat and eat, try to get it. No, you can't get it really. You have to substitute, and particularly if you are eating all this uh, um, artif artificial foods. That means banana, which have, don't have the minerals that should be in a banana. There are no more there. So we have our food from the world and we have accustomed ourselves from the world and from this food uh, we cannot just live technic technically we need food that is really in tune with our organismic need needs so I'm talking here a little bit as an agronomical biologist that was the profession of my father and so as little children we were already raised with a microscope and uh, raised with the latest uh, research results uh, in animal and man. And that has very much impregnated uh, also integrative therapy. The body concept um, was always there not only as a biological body but as a phenomenological body. What does it mean? Uh, the biological body may be a corpse. Yeah, corpus, corpus, corpse, yeah, it's like they're dead. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, your microbiome is still working and then some other little animals are coming mm -hmm. uh, to digest you and to integrate you again uh, into nature. And I thought, at least ecologically very productive. It's much more productive than being burnt because it consumes uh, quite a bit of energy and our ecological footprint is becoming better, all the bigger. All the people that burn themselves are robbing protein from nature. <laughs> so when Merleau Ponty uh, said, yeah, yeah, one has to think that. <laughs> When Merleau Ponty said, you are cher du monde, that means also we are really from the flesh, not from the meat. You know the difference between meat and flesh, between chair and viande in French. Uh, viande is beefsteak. Yeah. Um, and um, chair is living organic matter. And there's a big difference between flesh, human flesh and blood, not human meat and blood. You have now in the French and the English language with the word flesh, you have the very same thing less than in German with the word Leib. Yeah. Leib is corpus. Yeah. Yeah, so here are uh, 80 kilo pond of uh, water and minerals and some, some lead and other things from, from, from our towns. So this is the physical reality. But I'm a living body. And life, uh, well, we have theories about life, of course, how life emerged uh, um, from the world. The last riddles of life are still a mystery. But a living body is something else, that we are belonging to the most important species uh, of our planet. Um, are we the most important species of the planet? Yes, because we are the most destructive. So we, we consume the flesh of this planet, not the meat. We consume also the meat. Yeah, all these, these poor animals that we eat every day. In Germany, we have 58 million cohabitants named pig. 58 million. And less than 2% are living, living the way a pig should live. Mm. So this is an immense ecological footprint. So the people, the people, mm. the co-people, the co-beings that we eat, 
but we participate in a broader way with the flesh of the, this planet. We are not the most important people on this planet. The most important living being are the algae in the sea. They produce the atmosphere. Mm. So we, we couldn't live here without every day these very zealous and, and, and uh, uh, very eager little creatures would produce the woods, of course, too. But uh, the sea is uh, the place where the flesh of the world is producing the living conditions of the world. And the living, one of the living conditions is that we have water rich of oxygen. And we have oxygen in the mixture that the living beings, the mammals, for example, we, uh, are needing. We are not uh, able to live in a planet with nitrox or with methane. It's not possible. So the most important living being, and this is uh, Lobelock who first coined that, Lobelock, the inventor of the Gaia hypothesis, saying the planet is a living being, together with Lynn Margulis, it's also a microbiologist, they say uh, the most important uh, beings in this world are these microorganisms, the bacteria, the algae around us and on us and in us. Mm. We have them also on us and in us.